power lines should be demolished because of possible health risks. Scaremongering? Well, it's a fairly credible report. G'day everyone, Hari Mai, welcome to the show. It's Wednesday the 10th of May and tonight, homes beneath power pylons. A leaked health department report in Britain suggests the British government is about to be advised, and I quote, that building houses within 230 feet of high voltage power lines and 115 feet of lower voltage lines should be banned. Yes, banned. And the report has also considered such options as compulsorily buying all 75,000 homes in England and Wales located within that distance of high voltage power lines. Why? Well, in part, it's a response to a major study conducted by Oxford University, that study of 29,000 cases of childhood cancer, including 9,700 of leukaemia, found a raised risk of childhood leukaemia in children who live within 200 metres of high voltage lines at birth. How raised was the risk? Well, the study concluded that those within 200 metres were around 69% more likely to develop leukaemia than children living further away. 69%, that's a striking increase. And so in Britain, the suggestion about to come before government is to move people away from the pylons. In New Zealand, well, judge for yourself. This is new construction out in Massey, west of Auckland. But frankly, we could have driven south and found the same thing. And wherever you're watching, the probability is there are examples of this somewhere not terribly far from you. But there's a strange twist in all this. The pylons, and nearly all pylons in New Zealand, belong to Transpower. And sometimes, as is clearly the case here, the pylons are there before the houses are. Yes, city councils, regional councils and short local government is still drafting regional plans that allow houses, schools, you name it, to be built beneath high voltage power pylons. Still. This despite our councils having access to exactly the same reports that have produced such extreme recommendations in Britain. And this despite the kind of near pylon cancer clustering that this show reported on in depth last year. So all up, what, what are you looking at, like in terms of cancer? Well, cancer's just in this area through our valley here. There's about 28 uh, deaths or sufferings from cancer. And um, depression, suicide, depression can be up to 10, 7 to 10, just of what I know of. And suicides, 4 or 5. Like are we talking 29 cancers over? Most of these have been over the last 25 years. Yes, we did that story last year. We asked Transpower to join us tonight. They politely declined, but we are joined by Dr. Robin Smart, who surveyed all available medical literature about the health impacts of electromagnetic fields, specifically high voltage overhead power lines, and who's also medical spokesman for the lobby group No Towers. Robin, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you. What's your response to this leaked report in Britain? I think this is a very interesting step because it, it represents um, the opinion of a regulatory body in Britain. Um, this group, called SAGE, stands for Stakeholders Advisory Group on EMFs and it's, um, com it's com compiled by the Department of Health in Britain and has on it such people as the um, scientific advisor for the National Grid in Britain, which is a vested interest group, if ever there was one, as well as um, academic staff and so on. So this isn't so a lobby a group? It's and a, and, and, and it's these aren't hippies smoking reefer and then writing no, a report? This, this is, is, this this is, is a government is body. This is a, um, essentially a regulator who has come out with this, and it's a very big step um, away from the scientific uh, papers we've had from lobby groups and so on. So, some of the stuff they're recommending is clearly not going to happen. No government is going to buy 75,000 houses and flatten them because people are already living there. But let's look at what seems feasible. And what seems feasible in Britain is that they are going to say that no homes should be built closer than a certain distance to power pylons. And they're also going to say no new power pylons should be erected where homes already are. Let's talk about the distance. What do you think the Brits are going to settle on as a reasonable distance between housing, schools, buildings and power pylons? Well, the report suggests the distance they're going for is around about 230 feet or 70 metres from the line, which gives you an easement strip width of probably about 150, 160 metres. OK, let's talk about the difference between that. So at the moment, if you're going to have 230 feet, that's a line 
of 230 feet from the power line itself to the house on yeah. either side. Yes, and then you've got the width of the line itself, which is probably about 15 metres. So you end up with a width of about 150, 160 metres okay, for the what, easement strip. Okay, now Transpower talk about easement strips in New Zealand. What, yeah. what's, the, what, what's the easement strip here? The Transpower plan for their 400 kV line was a 65 metre wide strip. Uh, that is 25 metres from the line on each side and 15 metres for the line itself. So that is less than half what's being talked about in Britain? Miles less. Mm -hmm. And reading between the lines of the report, I think that the British are going for a level of probably about 0 0.4 micro teslas. Okay, we've been looking at telecoms recalcitrance to, 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 to walk away from a position of, of, of monopolistic advantage. One can understand actually that Transpower don't really want to, you know, foul their own nest. So yeah. someone else has to drive this, in the same way that the government's driven the telecom business. Yes. Who has to step up here and say, okay, Transpower, this is going to be the distance? Well, I think it, c it comes down to the government, finally, to the ministers involved. Um, and they, they really, the buck probably stops with them ultimately to make the decision on this. One can't expect Transpower to make this decision because the reason they want a narrow easement strip is basically money. The wider the easement strip, the more land they have to buy and the more it costs. And you get to a point where it's just not economic to build an overhead line. And, and given that we own Transpower, the more mm. it costs Transpower, the more it costs us. Yes. So there is no, there's no overwhelming overwhelming incentive for anyone to, 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 to act here, is there? Um, well, there, there is in the interest of standards and obviously there's a lot of arguments in favour of not having these great big lines and the huge pylons, um, the aesthetic arguments, mm. the, this health argument. Um, well, Robin, Robin what, what, one of the things... So there are many, it does affect the community quite broadly, well, not just yeah. simply Transpower. Absolutely, and that's what Oxford University found in, in an yes. overwhelming and compelling way. One thing I'm curious about is that local council, are, uh, that, that in the, where Transpower was there first, yeah. local councils are still allowing houses to be built beneath pylons. Should draft regional, should draft plans change? Well yes, we've made submissions to the Manukau City Council who as you've said in your intro yes, are still do. building houses under pylons yes. and they are sort of talking about it but really the councils have not got out of the blocks yet on the issue. So it's not time really. for governance both from local government and central government yes. and it's time to emulate what they're about to do in Britain? Yes indeed. Yes. Excellent. Robin Smart, Dr Robin Smart, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. Thank you. Now,